In the past several videos, we have been working with quadratic expressions, and we have learned how to use the principal axis of transformation. We've learned how to use that technique to simplify some of the quadratic um, equations that we had to deal with. Um, our first example was this one, which is really simple, because this could be handled just by completing the square. And we found out that this is an equation of an ellipse whereby the xy coordinate system was simply translated. Here, this again was the equation of an ellipse, but with this cross term in here, that was then indicative of a translation system of the xy axis where it was rotated. And we notice that if you have either x or y terms, you're going to have a translation. If both are present, you're going to have a translation of axis. If you have a cross product xy, then you're going to have a rotation of the axis. This equation has an xy term, and it has a y term. So this will involve both a rotation of the axis and a translation of the axis. And we will examine this equation in more detail. What we would do in this equation is just kind of outline the strategy for handling this. And now we're really going to rely heavily on what we did in the two previous videos, uh, videos number 39 and number 40. Um, again, the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Now, the general quadratic expression is this in two dimensions. In the xy plane, we have an x squared term, a y squared term, an xy inner product term, an x term, and a y term. And then this part of the equation can be written in matrix form. The coefficients of x squared and y squared, they're the diagonal elements. And whatever the coefficient of the xy term, the cross term, take half of that, and those are the off diagonal elements. So we will always have a symmetrical matrix here. Take the transpose of this, and you have the same matrix. And then here, for this part of the equation, x times some coefficient, y times some coefficient. With these coefficients here, just write them as a row vector times the column vector xy. So we have d times x plus e times y equals some constant. So this is our general quadratic equation written in matrix form. And x and y, then, they can be the components of some vector x right here. And of course, this would just be the vector x transposed. Now, what you saw us do in the uh, previous video was with this matrix right here, since it is symmetric, we had its model matrix that was comprised of the eigenvectors of this. And that model matrix M, that's the same thing as the rotation matrix in two dimensions. And again, we've discussed that in a lot of detail in our previous videos. So what you saw us do in the last video is we said, well, then vector x, and again, we're not explaining this in detail. We're relying now on that knowledge base from videos number 39 and number 40. We said vector x can equal not just the rotation matrix times an x prime, but for here, its model matrix is the same thing as that rotation matrix. Then with this expression here, what we had is, what we derived is that x transpose that was equal to 
x prime transpose times m inverse. And again, this is many now from um, video number 40. So what we did then with this substitution, this equation right here can be rewritten. And the way we have it then is we call this matrix here, our symmetric matrix, we called it A. So we had our symmetric matrix A times a vector x times the vector x transpose. That's this. Then we have plus DE times vector x. Then with this substitution, x transpose came out to be equal to this. We proved that in the previous video. So x transpose we can write like this. We have That's x transpose times the matrix A times the vector x, which we write like this. So this expression is written like this. Then from here we have plus d e times vector x, but that's this, m So we have this expression, and this is just the diagonal matrix. So this we wrote like this. The diagonal matrix with our, we're only working now with two by two matrices. So it was written like this, lambda 1, 0, 0, lambda 2. And this equals f. We had this equation is equal to f, then we had these substitutions, so this equation has become this equation, but it's still equal to f. Then here we have plus, and now here we have matrix element m, our model matrix, times d. We'll call that d prime. And here we have model matrix times E. We'll call that E prime. And again, D prime, that's the coefficient D times the model matrix M. Remember, D was the coefficient on x on the x term. E is the coefficient on the y term. And E prime, that's E times the model matrix M. So with this variable change, and again, we discussed uh, the philosophy behind this in the uh, last two videos. So again, we're really drawing on that background now. But with this video change, or this um, variable change, which leads to this variable change, this equation here then eventually becomes this equation right here. And this should be x prime transpose. This is actually a row vector here. So we can carry this just one step further. Here we could write this just simply, well let's just write it um, now in terms of component form. So we would have it like this. Wait a minute, let's just go back to here. This has a prime. We didn't carry the prime down. Okay, and again this diagonalizes matrix 
the matrix A. So we have two. Everything is zero except for the diagonals, and the diagonals are the two eigenvalues of matrix A. And again, we've covered this now in quite extensively in our previous videos. Okay, now let's write this in component form. So this vector x prime, this would be the same. We have lambda 1, 0, 0, lambda 2. Then here we will have x1 prime, then we will have y prime. Then here for the transpose of it, we have a row vector, x, we can just call this x prime, x prime, y prime. So this, that's this in component form, then we will have plus d prime, e prime, and then we'll have x prime, y prime, equals f. And then multiplying this, we'll have lambda 1, x prime, lambda 2, y prime, times this, so this is going to give us lambda, well this is carried out, here we'll have lambda 1 x prime, lambda 2 y prime, times x prime y prime, the row vector x prime y prime. And then this is just going to be the first element here times the first row, which is this. So we'll have lambda 1 x prime squared, lambda 2 y prime squared. So let's just write it like this. Squared, squared. Take this away. So we have this, or we can just say lambda 1 x prime squared plus lambda 2 y prime squared. So let's do that. Lambda 1 x prime squared plus lambda 2 y prime squared. Then here we will have d prime x prime plus e prime y prime equals f. So this right here, this final equation, notice it has no xy terms in it. The xy cross term is gone, and that is, of course, the purpose of doing these substitutions to begin with, as you saw us doing um, back in video number 40 and even back in video number 39. So when we have a video of this, or a video, when we have a, a quadratic equation of this general form, which you can write as a matrix like this, using this substitution, and again we explained the background for that in the two previous videos, we make that substitution then, this equation here becomes this equation here. Now exactly how does that, this is the idea behind then handling this type of quadratic equation where we have a rotation of the axis and a translation of the axis as well. To see now exactly how this works, uh, we should uh, use a specific example. And again, the equation that we're going to work with, which we'll do in the next video, is the equation 3x squared plus 
2 times xy plus 3y squared plus 8 times the square root of 2 times y equals 4. So this equation right here has an x squared, a y squared, a cross term xy. It has a y term, but it has no x term. So for this particular equation, the coefficient d is 0. But now we're going to work with this using exactly the steps here, only we'll do it with specific numbers, so we'll have a specific demonstration of this for you. If this is confusing, please go back and watch videos number 39 and number 40. That's where we lay down the background here for doing these types of manipulations. And again, this is all a manifestation of the principal axis of transformation. And those videos we dealt with, I think that was videos 33, 34, and 35. Anyway, please come back for part two of the video and we'll deal exclusively with this equation right here.